Welcome to uh, Ash Wednesday service. We've held a few of these services over the last few years using the last year's palm crosses, the ash from the palm crosses to make the sign of cross on people's foreheads or hands. And like communion, it's not an easy service to replicate during the lockdown lost of its physicality. We have to think about how we can still connect to the symbolism of this service. The words God spoke to Adam are repeated as the symbol of the cross is made in ash. From dust we came and to dust we will return. Well, it has a lot of uncomfortable connotations, reminds us of our own mortality. We should also see it as a sign of the constant resurrections in our lives. The ash comes from the palm cross, the cross a symbol that the story of God does not end with crucifixion, with death, but with resurrection. As we travel through this wilderness time, preparing to listen to Jesus' trial in the wilderness, we try to do so with hope and trust and faith. So let's gather in prayer. Let's pray. God, you made us from the dust and ashes. Breathe into us your breath of life. God, who is kind and compassionate, welcome us with your forgiveness. God, who knows our frailty firsthand, lead us through the wilderness of transformation for your glory. Amen. Building him is him 601. Look upon us. Blessed Lord.
a poem uh, come prayer for Ash Wednesday. In what we have done and neglected to do, in the good we intended but not followed through, Lord, we have fallen. For our wandering off and forgetting your ways, for leaving you out of our moments, our days, Lord, we are sorrowful. Lord, in dust and in ashes, we turn our hearts back to you and seek your forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. From the ashes you lift us, erasing our shame. You grant fresh beginnings and restore us again. Lord, you have raised us. Lord, you draw us back to you and forgive us our wrongs. You replace our lamenting with worshipful songs. Lord, we are grateful. Amen. We're going to have a look at Psalm 103, and you can follow it this time on the, on the screen, and we'll go through it a few verses by verses. Psalm 103, verse 1. Praise the Lord, my soul, O my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. At this point, the psalmist is encouraging himself to remember all the things that God has done for him. These things will inspire his soul to praise God wholeheartedly. So let's take a moment to remember what God has done for us. Bring to mind the ways God has forgiven you. In what ways has God healed you or someone you know? Has there been some sort of pit of despair, an area of your life you had lost hope in, and yet God has turned it around? How have you known? God's love and compassion recently. What good things has God blessed you with? And going on, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger abounding in love. He will not always accurse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Let's take just a moment to remember any sins which we may need to confess before God today, trusting in his promise that he does not repay us what we deserve, but that he is gracious and compassionate, removing our sins as far as the east is from the west. As we read the next verses, allow God to remind us of friends and family or situations that we are aware of which need God's compassion. As things come to mind, I'd encourage you just to pray for those situations, praying for God's love to shine through in those hard places. As a father has compassion on his children, 
So the Lord has compassion on those who fear him, for he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower in the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Let's declare these final words of this psalm together as a praise to God. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord my soul. Amen. The first reading for Ash Wednesday comes from the prophet Joel, not a book we turn to very often. And Joel was preaching at a time when there was this great invasion of locusts that had threatened famine over all the land. And he likened this invasion of locusts to an invading army. We've had lots of military metaphors used during the pandemic. And the people and the prophet wondered if these locusts were a sign of God's judgment. And we see and hear that from some people today as well. In the face of this devastation, the prophet calls for the people to return to the Lord. Reading from the book of Joel, verse 2, chapters, chapter 2, verses 1 to 2, and then 12 to 16. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, who relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Amen. The prophet Joel warns the people of God's coming judgment. He calls them to a period of repentance of fasting, of weeping, and of mourning. Maybe this year does not feel like a time for fasting, weeping, and mourning. Maybe some of us feel like we've been living through Lent for a whole year by now. But maybe we can enter into this time with a slightly different understanding, especially this year. Yes, we acknowledge the broken world that we live in and the mistakes that we all make which contributes to that brokenness. 
And yes, we acknowledge that we need to turn to God to confess the sins of the world and the sins in our own lives. And yes, there will be times when we still feel a need to fast and to weep and to mourn. As we do, may we find, as the prophet says, may we find that God continues to be gracious, compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. Joel warns the people that the outward signs of our repentance are not what God looks at. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, he says, but tear your hearts instead. Many of us bring torn hearts to God at this time. Maybe we are permitted to say to God, you asked for torn hearts. Well, here's mine. And Joel says, promises, that if we do so, we will find a God who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And maybe some of us have turned our hearts inward during our isolation, turned our hearts in as it's so easy to do. How do we return our torn hearts to God? How do we turn our hearts back to God? Let's turn to our Gospel reading to explore ways that that might happen. Reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 1 to 6, and then 16 to 18. And Jesus is speaking to the disciples and the crowd. Beware of practising your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your arms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your inner room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whether, whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Amen. Jesus' teaching, a bit like the prophets, can be taken as a warning about our motivation for worship about not doing something just for show or to boost the ego. Matthew's Gospel introduces us to Jesus' teaching about prayer. And we've been looking at that in our introduction to Christian meditation. Jesus tells us to go into our inner room and pray to your Father in secret. Go into your inner room, your heart, even a torn heart. Prayer begins with interiority and prayer can be a deep still silence. Don't go babbling on, Jesus says, like the heathens who think that the more they say, the more likely they are to be heard. We can pray together and it's good to pray together. We can pray to God and let God know about our needs and our fears. But let us also take time 
to be with God in silence. And Jesus goes on to tell us to be calm. Do not worry about material things, what to wear, what to eat and what to drink. We should not let our daily requirements of life turn into obsessions or anxieties. And he says we should pay attention. Set your mind on the kingdom of God before everything else. And he tells us to be present in the moment. Don't worry about tomorrow. In our reading, Jesus says three times, for your Father who sees in secret will reward you. In the silent, secret prayers of a torn heart, God, the Father, hears. We're going to try a little bit of a different way of prayer here. As we look at the visuals of some of the scriptures that we've used and alluded to, if one speaks to you, take some time to contemplate on it, maybe tonight and over the next few days. Let it speak to you, resonate in you. Let the silent prayer be offered up from your heart. Let's 
usually thought of as a time when we give something up or maybe take up something new. But as we enter Lent and as we think about Jesus being led by the Spirit into the wilderness, it's also a good time to think about where the Spirit is leading us. I wonder if we have felt being led by the Spirit during our wilderness year. I'm sure for many this last year has felt like a time of simplicity, sorrow, sacrifice and truth speaking, those central words that are often used about the 40 days of Lent. And maybe for some of you, you have helped, felt the Spirit pray within you with sighs too deep for words, as Paul described it. Wilderness times do many strange things to us, but they can also be times when torn hearts are mended. They can also be those times when God hears and sees into our hearts and into our silent longings. It can also be the time when we experience God as a Father who has unbounded compassion on his children. It can be a time when we can experience God's love stretching from the everlasting to the everlasting. May this Lent time be a spirit-filled time for you and a time of healing and a time of wholeness. Let's close with him 555. Amazing grace.
Father God, you see our secret acts of worship, you know our hidden sacrifices, you reward our quiet obedience. So look gently on our battered hearts and fill us with the power of your Spirit, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 